All right, welcome folks. This is, uh, you're at the Takeo Tuesday. This is What is NPSH? You have Jim Frisby. I'm the Commercial Business Solution Manager out of the Central Region, kind of filling in. Mr. Rich Medeiros, our, uh, one of the gentlemen that uh, normally takes part in this is at Hotel Point uh, down in, I think that's in Scottsdale, Arizona. So uh, um, he's not gonna take part, but I'm filling in to assist with uh, Brett Zerba. Brett is going to do the presentation, and uh, I think most of you have uh, probably taken part in this. We've got about, uh, boy, just north of, uh, just just south of 100 people attending right now. So uh, uh, most of you probably know the drill, um, but I'm also always welcoming those brand new people to uh, Takeo Tuesday. So welcome. I like that. Look at that in the leaf. That's a permanent. Um, nice, nice going there. Uh, Brett. Um, so <laughs> welcome those that are brand new and um, we won't bore the, the the folks that attend all the time, but if you want to do more presentation individually with your office and in the central region and all the other regions, um, we have the ability to uh, do these uh, presentations within your organization. And I know Rich, Rich and Brett have uh, been instrumental in growing, um, growing some of the newer engineering folks and or those that are involved in design build, which might be a me uh, mechanical contractor that has their own uh, staff. So welcome. Um, with that said, I'm gonna ask for a couple uh, couple things from you folks. I just need to see, uh, somebody can raise their hand, make sure you can hear me uh, and make sure you can see the screen. It says, what is NPSH? So I see Tom, thank you. I got some question marks. I see Rich, thank you, Roger. Look at that. Don't know where you guys are all from, but uh, and, and guys and gals, but uh, thank you for your hand raising. I'm assuming you can hear me and you could see the screen. So we're gonna go with that. Um, perfect, Fort Wayne. Oh, look at that. Shout out to Jerry, awesome. That's, that's awesome. So I got the questions up there. So this is all about, you know, we're gonna, uh, Brett is gonna go over what is NPSH, um, part of your, Involvement is uh, ask questions if you have them. Um, if you type them out, we'll we'll try to find a spot that I'll ask Brett those questions. If for some reason we have so many questions we can't get through as a presentation, which Brett, I don't know if that's happened too often, but uh, I'm going to throw it out as uh, we will get to the questions one way, shape, or form. So um, so a couple other things um, after about 24 hours after this presentation is done you may get, I think it's two emails, one about the link to the presentation because this is recorded. You signed your life away to say, hey, I'll, I'll take part in this presentation. And with that said, we'll be able to give you the information back to you as a recorded presentation. And secondly, if you are looking for a PDH certificate, you will also get a link to the certificate. Um, so with that said, I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Brett Zerba, who is our application engineer and uh, quite a great guy. So Brett, take it away, sir. Thanks a lot, Jim. I tell you what, you did a great job standing in. We might have to hire you full time for that. What do you think of that? <laughs> Anyways, wait, uh, wait a second. I thought I was already full time <laughs> for 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 uh, helping us out with presentations. Uh, I know you're you're full time. You're, you're... Anyways, I, I digress. Hi, everybody. Uh, again, uh, Brett Zerba, Applications Engineer with Takeo. Uh, most of you have been through the routine. You've, you've heard me, my voice uh, on some other presentations, be it uh, me as the moderator or me as the presenter. Uh, and uh, ho hopefully uh, we can cover some issues here with uh, MPSH. Uh, before I get into it, I just want to you know, give you a little, little background on myself. I've been with the company almost 25 years, which is amazing. I, I you know, this is my third career uh, after I graduated from the University of New Hampshire in 1981. So, uh, you know, I, so at 81, uh, 25 years, and so I had a couple other stops before uh, joining Takeo, and uh, what a rewarding uh, 25 years it's been. Uh, I, I can't describe uh, what, what it's meant to me as an individual, and um, me, uh, my family, and, and everything like this. Uh, I just want to tell you uh, one one nice story. Uh, the, the company uh, really uh, stresses education. 
for, for all individuals at the company. And, and, and some of you have been to our facility and you, you've seen uh, some results of that, the, the, uh, what we call the IDC Center. Uh, we, we, I mean, I mean you know, uh, almost 10 years ago, we built an addition. Here we are, a manufacturing company. We built an addition and the majority of that addition was for educating folks, be it employees or folks like yourself or, or, or whatever. Uh, just unbelievable, right? We, we, that addition wasn't for wasn't for adding production space. Uh, it, it, this particular addition was for classrooms, uh, offices, and classrooms. But the, uh, how great is that? But I digress a little bit. The reason I brought up education is because a few years after I started at Takeo, um, uh, and they had always offered uh, tu tuition reimbursement. Uh, you know, help folks uh, get their GEDs and and, and some uh, uh, other uh, educational. Uh, programs they st the, the the first program they wanted they wanted to start a master's program at Takeo and i you know i had a degree in mechanical engineering and i had always thought about getting a masters uh, you know somewhere down the road to 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 you know maybe sh help help show my young uh, impressionable children uh, how important education is but but, but Takeo sponsored a, a a program and i was able to get my mba my masters in business administration through Takeo and um, I, 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 it was a fantastic experience. It was, uh, there was 12 of us in the class. I think 11 of us ended up graduating. One, one made a moved on or, or whatever, but um, they brought the professors to our facility. So if you've ever taken night courses before, uh, a lot of times those night courses start at what, seven, eight, nine, I don't know, so they're at night, right? Well, ours started at four o'clock or 4.30 or 3.30, whatever it was. So we were still able to get home at a reasonable hour, and uh, it was just a rewarding experience. Uh, so, just just a, a something new. Maybe you folks didn't know about that, or or, or some of you did. But education, right? Uh, how important is that? Well, let me get into today's topic. Today's topic is NPSH. Uh, now, now, we manufacture HVAC hydronic pumps, um, and uh, Rich, myself, and others. Uh, I'm sure Jim uh, eventually or someday will get a call. He probably already has. Uh, about the possibility of, of a pump uh, uh, having some issues in the field, and that possible uh, the cause could be uh, uh, related to net pos net NPSH, net positive suction head. Um, uh, uh, us pump manufacturers, uh, uh, you know, have to be concerned about that. But you, our audience, needs to be just as concerned about it. Um, uh, so um, that that's just a, a quick introduction. So let me get right into it. Let me get right into it. So what is NPSH, right? Well, I have already said it. It stands for net positive suction head. And I don't like definitions, right? Uh, you know, uh, I was taught how to read a dictionary many, many, many moons ago. I think I still have a, a, a published one, right? I don't go online for it. But here's the definition, uh, or one of the definitions. If you actually, uh, you know, Google it or uh, go into different books, there could be different definitions. But they all, uh, as much as they vary, they they have the same uh, information. NPSH is a measure of the pressure experienced by a fluid on the suction side of its centrifugal pump. Now, the pumps we're talking about are our commercial water, HVAC hydronic, hot and cool water, um, hydro, centrifugal pumps. MPSH is defined as the total head of fluid at the center line of the impeller, less the fluid's vapor pressure. Blah, 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 blah. What the heck does that mean? <laughs> well, hopefully I can uh, cover some of that uh, as we get into it, right? It's a very important um, uh, item, but you know what, what does some of that mean? And I think as I get into the discussion a little more, um, and, and further in the presentation, hopefully we can uh, we can all understand a little more what we're talking about. By the way, I, I'm a big uh, New England Patriots fan. Uh, you know, don't don't throw eggs at me, uh, you know, or boo me or anything like that. Big news out of the Patriots land today. They uh, they uh, cut uh, Cam Newton. Our starting quarterback is now not our starting quarterback because he's been cut. So I guess we're going with the rookie. Tip, hey, tip, hey, Brett. Typical, I'm, yep. Hi, Jim. I, I'm a Chicago fan, and I'll just say I think we got more quarterbacks than we need. I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, I, I'm still recovering from a couple of years ago when we lost our uh, the best. Anyways, I'll get into it. So some, some important things to understand about net positive suction head. It has two main components, okay? NPSH has two main components. 
that we need to be avail, uh, 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 aware of. Uh, the first one, NPSHA. That's the net positive suction head available. That's what you, that's what somebody has to calculate, right? That's a calculated value. And um, I've been uh, in many discussions uh, and been through the calculations with some folks. And, and to be quite honest, it, it, I don't want to say it's a forgotten or a not done uh, calculation, but um, it, it may not always be um, at the top of people's um, uh, thought process. But it is a calculation that the engineer of record is responsible for. All right, so that could be you or someone on your team. Um, and, and maybe because of uh, uh, you, you've done 100 systems and you never had an issue and because it's closed loop, blah, 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 blah. You know, we'll get into some of the details there. But nonetheless, um, it is a, uh, a item that it's a calculated item that needs to be calculated by you, the, um, uh, the designer. You're responsible for it. The, 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 the guy who puts a stamp on the drawing. Another component is MPSHR. That's what's required. That's what we as a pump manufacturer test at our facility, okay? So that's the MPSHA, MPSHR. There's kind of two, two different components of, of net positive suction head. One is A, one is R, okay? Uh, so, um, and uh, I mean, I'm a, I'm a simple, I, I tell people I'm a, I'm a simple person. I, I tell my wife this and, and, and she's finally agree, agreed with me, right? Uh, uh, anyway, she finally agreed to me after a few years. Uh, MPSA, A is a required detailed calculation. R is determined by critical testing, and I'll get into that. Uh, but A needs to be greater than R. That's the simple part right here. A needs to be greater than R. So the first letter in the alphabet has to be greater than the, uh, than the R. All right, that's the simple way to remember it. A needs to be uh, uh, greater than R. The R is determined by uh, uh, some detailed testing that uh, Taco and other pump manufacturers, you know, the, 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 the other, our, our competitors, and you know, you know them just as well as I do, um, they um, have uh, put their products, just like we did, through some uh, ma major testing in, in, in somebody's lab, right? We happen to have our own uh, lab at our facility in Cranston, Rhode Island. It's actually uh, certified by the Hydraulic Institute. And that wasn't always the case. Uh, 25 years ago, we did not have a certified uh, lab, and it was a lot smaller, and uh, the, the company has reinvested, and, and, and now we have a, a lab that can go up to, uh, I, I think, over 1,000 GPM, or, or excuse me, 10,000 GPM. So we can test just about any of our products right at our facility, uh, but it's certified by the Hydraulic Institute. Uh, there is a, an actual procedure to determine MPSHR. It, 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 it's as as we're testing the suction pressure 3% as it starts to go down a little like 3%. And I'm not explaining it 100%, but it is a tested, uh, a critical tested value that we uh, determine. And that, that's how we can put it on our curves, just like everybody else. So uh, it, it, we follow the, the procedures or our, our lab technicians follow the procedures um, a, a, as, it, as, it, um, as we go through. And just to reiterate, just to reiterate, the engineer of record is responsible for MPSHA calculations, okay? Um, at least to consider it. Uh, and I'm gonna get into some of that um, as we go. So, so some neat, 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 you know, some items, some bullet points here. Uh, not, none of this is too uh, uh, earth shattering, but nonetheless, um, it's important to understand and be comfortable uh, with all of these. Here's some possible, um, I'll call them safeguards, right? Uh, when, 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 if you get involved with, um, uh, you know, I'm gonna get into a lot more details, some calculations and in, in, into the steam tables and, and all of that, but some of the simple things uh, that, that may help you um, in, in your, if you're out on a job site, right? And, and some of you may have already done this. So I, I, my terminology here is safeguards. Well, here's one in a closed loop system. All right, this is a, a probably what 80 to 90 percent of the what we're talking about here in our uh, clean water uh, type of system where it's not open to atmosphere. So that hot water system, right? The, you got to run some hot water around to some air handlers or to some uh, coils or whatever, uh, baseboard, whatever, uh, and it leaves the mechanical room. You know, comes out of the boiler, leaves the mechanical room, comes back to the mechanical room, and never is open to atmosphere. That's our closed loop system. Same thing with a chiller system, right? So in a closed loop system, here's one safeguard. Ensure your, ensure your PRV setting is sufficient to maintain positive pressure. In other words, 
uh, the expansion tank, which controls, which help control pressure in the system, make sure those components are doing their job. And in a closed loop system, if that's the case, more than likely, um, that's a good safeguard to, to, to uh, uh, keep the net positive suction head calculation where it should be. So something to consider in a closed loop system. In an open system, if you're doing a cooling tower system, I can't emphasize this bullet enough, the first one, do the calcs. Do the calcs. Somebody should be responsible to do the calcs, okay? Uh, take it into consideration. When, you're, when, when you have an open tower and, and that's open to the atmosphere, so that system's not pressurized, as it's only open to the atmosphere. You don't, uh, that's absolute pressure is only 14, at, at sea level, it's roughly 14.7 um, or 33.9 once you uh, multiply it two, by 2.31. It, it, you don't have as much uh, 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 safety in, in your system. So do the calcs, all right? Take it into account. And then, uh, you know, so many variables uh, there. And here's a couple other uh, potential safeguards as well. Uh, I can't, I, I, I'm going to show you a sketch uh, further on in the presentation, but ensure the pump suction is below the cooling tower basin. All right, so a lot of these cooling towers get put up on the roof right uh, you know and uh, you got to look structurally at at supporting it but you got to you got to raise it up you got to get it 10 feet off the ground you know I'm making up numbers here 5 10 20 feet off the ground well every foot adds money right so uh, but make sure the pump is is below where the water comes out of that uh, uh, cooling tower basin I, I can't emphasize that enough um, every once in a while we see see them above and that just adds to the complexity of the calculations and and it's 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 asking for trouble it's asking for trouble um so uh, keep that in mind at our facility um uh, at our some of you may have seen the mechanical room our tower is up on the roof but uh, all the pumps are down in the down in the mechanical room uh, so they're well below there so that that number that i'm going to show you in the calc uh, is really uh, you know uh, helpful in that situation so i can't emphasize it enough and here's one um, when you go out to a job site, you know, uh, we show things, engineers show things on their drawings, details, uh, and, and a lot of times uh, our drawings, your drawings don't look exactly like uh, what's in the field. Well, here's, here's, a, here's a bullet that, that you may want to um, uh, look for uh, or, or be conscious of. And, and, you know, more than likely, it, it, most of the time this doesn't happen, but don't let any inverted U's in the piping system. So what I mean by that is as it comes out, right, from the tower and the pumps below it and the piping starts going down, don't don't let it go back up over, you know, to get to get over a beam or something like that and put an inverted U in there. You're just asking for trouble you're, or, or you're just putting some barriers in the way that could cause um, some pumping issues, right? Some of this is good engineering practice, good installation practice, but they're just little bullets that may be helpful in that regard. So, so something to consider. And then for both of these systems, um, here's, a, here's another tip, uh, clog strainers, right? Uh, uh, as an example, the, the Taco suction diffuser, and I think our competitors as well, it actually, um, if, you, if, if and when you read the instruction manual, that strainer comes with a start, it actually has two strainers, a startup strainer and then a basket strainer. The startup strainer after startup needs to be removed because it's a fine mesh it's it's catching it's catching a lot of uh, a lot of the debris that may be in there from the installation well uh, on some projects I, I i've been out there and uh, you know you start asking some questions you know you, you you isolate things and you go over there and there's this startup strainer clogging uh, the suction side of the pump well that's that's not good that's not good so uh, you know something like that and then there's other strainers there could be a basket strainer or a Y strainer or, uh, or or something in there. Make sure those are also um, uh, unclogged and that, um, that, that could help um, uh, your situation as well. So what happens if MPSH R is greater than MPSH A? Jim, do we have any questions? How are we doing? Hey, Brett, My we don't have anything specific to the topics and I've addressed all the other, hopefully all the okay. other ones that were not related Super. but uh, Super. not at this point brett but uh, oh you jim you, you got any questions you think you, you know what i was just going to throw a comment in here i've been on board yeah. for 22 months i have uh 
uh, as you were talking about the cooling tower uh, open system, uh, I've, I've been a part of a problem project in the sense that uh, what was calculated was calculated properly, but what was in the field, and you might get to this, what was in the field was diagnosed as there was a problem. Um, yep. So the calculations were good, but what was physically there and what was calculated created, you know, there was a there was a pressure drop in some of the uh, piping before the pump that created the problem. So yeah. anyway, just yeah. not a question, yeah. but I guess a little insight. I've, uh, it does happen, but, uh, um, you know, as you mentioned, there's uh, somebody has to take ownership and they did, uh, but there was some field situation that still created the problem. And uh, I'm sure, Jim, that's uh, for, for many in the audience, that's not an uncommon statement, to, to be quite honest. And not necessarily just for uh, this topic, but for many topics. So it's just something that uh, comes up, you know, and that's what we have to deal with. That's, uh, that's one of our, 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 our things we deal with in life. So when, uh, when R is greater than A, right, not instead of A being greater than R, when R is greater than A, um, cavitation occurs, okay? Uh, and what is cavitation? Well, I'll tell you what, it's it's not good. It's not good. It's not good at all. And before I even get into cavitation, many of us, and uh, to be quite honest, when I first, I've been on some job sites, it gets a little confusing and sometimes it's hard to dissect which one's which. Many of us th think it's air moving through the pump. That is not the case. That is not the case. That's a separate issue that I'm not gonna cover too, too, in too much detail today, but nonetheless, uh, that is not what cavitation is. That is not what cavitation is. Cavitation occurs when the suction pressure drops below the flash point of the water, all right? So these are all values you can, uh, that, that I'm gonna show you some charts where you can get all this information, but if that suction pressure drops below the flash point of the water, that's when cavitation occurs. And what happens is that the lowest pressure point in a pump is at the eye of the impeller. That's the lowest pressure point, right? So if that pressure may drop so low that the, when that happens, there's a phase change. There's a phase change of the water. Um, and that water changes, uh, flashes to steam. Okay, so it's not air, but it flashes to steam. It's like, um, uh, and, and that can happen. Um, uh, w w many of us or all of us are, 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 are we, we think that 212 degrees, that's when water boils. Well, actually, you can boil water at a lot lower temperature if the pressure is different, if the pressure is different. So uh, that's all uh, shown in the steam tables, um, and that's some uh, information I'm going to show you um, uh, 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 further down the road. But that's what happens. That's actually what the cavitation is. The water is changing phase. from uh, It flashes to steam. As those steam bubbles, right, if you, th if you think about uh, – when you boil eggs or boil, you know, uh, boil water, or if you've seen water boil, you've seen those bubbles. Well, as those, as the impeller rotates, those bubbles are now trying to escape, or not escape, they travel along the veins of the impeller. They travel along the veins of the impeller, trying to get to the outside of the wheel, right? That's where the water's going, that's where these bubbles go. And then that's the high, the outside of the wheel is the highest pressure point. And as that happens, it condenses back into liquid water. It's like a shock, a shock wave. So the, the, the steam bubbles, the steam uh, condenses back into liquid water. And so that, so we've, we have one phase change. Now we're getting another phase change. And that is, that is an extremely violent uh, phase change that exerts a tremendous amount of force on the impeller. So that is actually what cavitation is. It's phase changes of liquids. Um, at different temperatures, different water, uh, pressures uh, throughout the pump, uh, you know, and I'm going to get into the calculations of it, but that's actually what it is. It's not just air coming in from the system, right? The, and, and many of us have been involved where there's air entrained in the system. That's why, uh, personally, I would always put a inline air and dirt 4900 Takeo air and dirt separator on there, and after 10 rev, you don't have any air in the system. Uh, but nonetheless, that's another whole uh, statement. So th th these, this double phase change is actually what is uh, causing the, 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 uh, the cavitation. And that cavitation um, uh, has three, three kind of uh, items, uh, effects. One is noise and vibration, right? Noise and vibration is one of the, um, 
possible effects uh, from cavitation, right? And uh, if you've ever been out there, uh, and I'm, a, I'm actually going to uh, try to get us to a link on a YouTube video uh, where you're going to hear some uh, cavitation, or, or hopefully, uh, I got my fingers crossed on that. I practiced it yesterday and it worked, but uh, uh, me, me and uh, uh, software and uh, technology, sometimes it's, it's skipped my generation. That's, so that's one of the uh, issues. Damage to the pump or impeller. I'm going to show you a picture of it. Um, and it doesn't take long. And the bigger the pump, the quicker it damages. Trust me. Trust me. Um, uh, the, the, the impeller uh, will start to erode. It'll start the, the, this uh, violent act of the water changing phase, the steam changing phase. Boom. It, 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 that shock wave just starts eating away at the impeller, starts eating away at the impeller. And then you will have some falling off of the pump performance as well. Um, uh, so those are the kind of the, the threefold effects of cavitation. Uh, none of them are good. None of them are good, and they vary. Depends how 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 much uh, uh, how close or how far R is above A. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, th those are the, the kind of the effects of it. And um, uh, if 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 it's bad enough. That impeller, uh, I mean, you get a big pump, 100 horsepower pump. That impeller, that that could just that could be destroyed very, very quickly, very quickly. Here's a picture. Here's a picture of an impeller that's actually had some cavitation, and uh, so here's the eye of the impeller, right? In case uh, someone doesn't realize that, right? They, these are those veins that I was talking about, and believe it or not, they used to be curved. You can kind of see that right here. See how they're curved? So think about that water. I mean, that th those steam bubbles coming out of here and they're changing back the phase, boom, shockwave, and it just eats away. It just it just uh, destroys that material. Right. And, uh, uh, you, you know, well, uh, OK, someone's out there saying, well, why don't why don't pump manufacturers make the impeller stronger? Well, we could do that and then uh, triple the cost of the pump. Uh, but but nonetheless, I, I digress. I kind of kind of made a joke there that I probably shouldn't have. But you can kind of see what the effect would be. Uh, or the potential effect of, would be um, of, of some of this uh, cavitation. So I, I think it's it's pretty obvious there um, uh, in that in that regard. <clears throat> Any questions on that, Jim? Uh, nothing from the audience. Um, but it, I, I'm going to throw it out. Is uh, so the most destructive part is right coming out of the eye and right immediately after. It yeah, because that it doesn't take long for that uh, the the, the the uh, the vapor the the steam uh, to change back to to a liquid so it, once it kind of gets out of that spot you, there's, you're going from the lowest pressure and that pressure changes just as it comes out uh, yep. of the of the eye right it changes very quickly and it, it, it just starts beating it beating it up uh, as you can see right from uh, from yeah, up, it, right you, you notice that yeah yeah on on the larger pumps it's 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 definitely a sound I know in the smaller stuff that I've uh, seen a lot it, it might not be as loud but uh well i'm i'm fingers crossed i hope that video works well yeah me too um i, I yeah you know you you mentioned larger pumps and, and smaller pumps um any pump or circulator right the, if you've ever sat in on, on some of our other discussions uh to, to, in my thought process a circulator is the same as a pump right they, they, they do the same thing obviously there's different components and blah 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 smaller bigger whatever uh, but any of them can have cavitation. Okay, the the larger ones, the larger ones that that Jim and I are more uh, involved with uh, if, at, at Takeo. Although we sell the, the circulators, uh, we we uh, we sell them. Uh, unbelievable how many we manufacture a day. But nonetheless, um, on the larger ones, it it sounds like marbles or rocks or 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 or, or, or you, you you'll hear it very shortly. Uh, on the smaller ones, it may be a hissing sound or uh, kind of like steam or, or uh, maybe a little sand going through it. Uh, so the, the, the noise could be different. The problems still exist, but um, re really there's a, a difference uh, possibly in the noise value um, as you go. So, all right, yeah, fingers crossed. It doesn't, fingers it doesn't crossed. discriminate from manufacturer to manufacturer, so the <laughs> noise is still yeah. going to be it's no, gonna the, be the, damaging. The, the 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 the, uh, the process in the no or the uh, situation in the noise it doesn't care if it's a green pump which I hope that's uh, what you folks are specifying or a red pump or a blue pump uh, it does not care the noise is going to be the same so my fingers are crossed 
Let's see what happens. You got to watch an ad at first. Uh. All right. No sound. You couldn't hear it, right? That I screw it. I screwed that up. That, that's right. So I think you have to change your uh, the audio to your computer versus your microphone. Ah, shoot. Sorry about that, folks. I did it yesterday. Phone call. No audio. Sharing. Ah, ah, Brett. Well, that's screwed it. things up, huh? Nope. No problem. You're, uh, it happens. Yep. Stuff happens. Options. Attendees can attendees can view list. Raise hand. Session timer. View. Webcam. I control default. Uh, see, I you know what I practiced yesterday. Preferences. Labs. Profile sharing. Include webinar screen sharing. Oh well. I'm wait. I'm waiting for the drones to fly through the piping. Yeah. There you go. I apologize, uh, folks. Uh, I, I, I thought I had that. You know, I even practiced yesterday and still screwed it up. Oh, well, hate when I do that things like that. But um, such is life. It all hap it happens. It happens. Yep, it happens. Yeah, it happens. It happens. I thought I thought it would have been under the webinar, too. Now I'm hitting too many buttons. Now it's getting ugly <laughs> settings. That's all right. That's all right. I like the title. Category audio. Yeah, so there's a volume I'm sorry. on the YouTube player that was down pretty far. So maybe the volume on the YouTube video was turned down. That was a great suggestion there, John. Thank you, sir. One too many buttons. I, I, uh, yep, yeah, it's there. You go. Let's try it again. Anything, Jim? No, nope. So it's it has to do with your audio. Yeah, it's my setup. Microphone. Yep. All right. Sorry, folks. Uh, uh, well, if you if you take a picture of that uh, link uh, right here and go to it yourself, you'll be able to hear it. <laughs> uh, damn it. God damn. Oh, sorry. That's sorry. all right. I got to move on. I got to move on. So all right. um, I'm going to see if I can post a YouTube video link in the chat is what's asked. So what it sounds we're... like is um, uh, marbles. Um, you know, uh, uh, rocks. Um, it, it, actually, the 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 this uh, link itself, it actually sounded like uh, somebody beating a drum. Believe it or not, uh, it was kind of on a uh, on a uh, regular stuff there. So, uh, uh, I apologize, folks. Uh, I thought I I thought I had it done. Computer check, the sound check. Uh, yeah, but see, no audio. Oh, boy. All right. Anyways, let's move on. Let's move on. So. Where do you find MPSHR? I kind of already told you, um, it's pretty easy to find. It's on pump manufacturers, pump car, uh, pump curves, okay? As I explained earlier, we do a lot of testing. We do a lot of testing uh, to, to get that value, but here's a pump curve for a FI series model, 6011D, 1760 RPM pump. There's the design point. All right, and on this particular uh, model, it's 1500 RPM at 80 feet ahead, 1500 at 80 feet ahead. If you just go right up this line, right? And some, some curves, it's down below, or some manufacturers may have it in a different location, but I think you can see it pretty easily in this pump curve, right? So all I have to do is uh, scroll up, scroll up, and I can get to it right here. And let's see, these are in four, no, 5, 10, 15, 20. So um, uh, it's around 15, uh, 15 feet. And uh, it, if you use the TACO uh, selection tool for uh, pumps, um, the narrative uh, the data actually shows the exact value for you, okay? It shows you the exact value. Um, so, uh, uh, you know, you can estimate it from the curve, um, and that feet is absolute uh, uh, pressure. 
Uh, so uh, keep that in mind. You know, the the, the uh, uh, column below that for uh, head in a pump is differential. This is absolute up above. So um, you know, uh, you got to keep that in, in, into. You got to make sure the units are correct. I remember taking a unit uh, class in in school, and my head was spinning uh, until it. You know, I actually uh, had to figure things out there. So you got to make sure the units are correct. Notice we also show uh, the imperial. Uh, we have the imperial. That you also have meters or kilopascal uh, as well. So uh, SI units are shown here. Um, if you ever get involved in that. So where do you find the MPSHR? It's shown on manu pump manufacturers' pump curves, or in the narrative da data. That's pretty easy. I think that's pretty easy. So that's pretty easy, I, I would hope. MPSHA. MPSHA is actually a calculation um, uh, that needs to be done. And here is uh, uh, the formula uh, that's shown right here. Um, and so on the left-hand side, let me get my little uh, spotlighter. On the left-hand side, the MPSH calculation. Um, so a a MPSHA, net positive suction, head actual or available, um, uh, you know, in, in our industry, a lot, of, a lot of terminology means the same thing. And here's the uh, breakdown of it here. And some, I, you know, as, as if you investigate this a little further, do some of your own little homework uh, offline, uh, uh, some of the terminologies or call outs could be different, uh, but uh, the, the, the values are the same. The values are the same. So uh, j just keep that in mind. HA. So this is an open cooling tower. So we were talking about a cooling tower and one of my suggestions was, one of my statements was, do the calcs for an open cell cooling tower. Do the calcs for an open cell cooling tower. So this is actually the atmospheric pressure or absolute pressure. So that, um, that is at sea level, at sea level is 14.696, 14.7. I think uh, many of us uh, understand that uh, the, the atmospheric pressure at sea level is 14.7. Uh, a PSI. So in order to get that into the right right units, we have to multiply that times, um, I'm going to do it on my uh, calculator. Uh, you can all uh, check me just in case I multiply wrong. 14.7, that comes up to uh, 33.957 or 33.9. Um, if you actually multiplied 696, maybe it would round down. So that is the HA. In a closed loop system, that value is going to be a lot different, a lot different. That's actually going to be the pressure of the system, the pressure of the system. So, uh, and sometimes you, you could use the, uh, the expansion tank uh, uh, value or pressure relief valve or whatever, but nonetheless, uh, that's, that's the difference uh, in those. HZ, HZ, and notice it's a plus or minus. Please don't ever uh, 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 um, use it um, above. Please don't ever use it above. Don't add to, to your issues there. It's the vertical distance from water surface to pump center line. It's the vertical difference from water surface. In my uh, case here, I'm showing five feet. So, you know, uh, uh, man, uh, more and more towers we're seeing getting be placed right on a grade or right on, you know, without any uh, being raised up. Well, that's just going to uh, really possibly affect this uh, situation quite a bit, right? Uh, you know, who, who wants to make a sump or, or, or you know, uh, and put it down here or whatever? I, I mean, you could use maybe a different uh, vertical turbine or something like that, but nonetheless. Yeah, Brett. Starting. Yeah. No question, but uh, if it becomes a sump, maybe it's going to be a vertical turbine, a different pump. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and, and Taco uh, Which has is a complete, complete line of vertical turbines. Uh, and you can, uh, we, we've had some uh, um, uh, webinars on our vertical turbine stuff. Uh, Jim's uh, done some great uh, presentations with uh, others. Uh, so uh, we, we have a complete line of vertical turbines. So that, that is a possibility um, as well. But uh, to be quite honest, uh, in this day and age, we're still probably seeing mostly uh, base mounted pumps uh, or maybe a vertical in line for, for this uh, application. But yeah, nonetheless... Yeah, and I I just wanted to point out, since you said it's some, right, depending on the marketplace, I mean, there's there's people from all over the country probably on this, and, yeah. and some people may have designed a lot of vertical uh, vertical turbines for this application, but, but you're absolutely right. Yep. And then uh, HV is the velocity head at pump suction. It's the velocity head at pump suction, and that um, uh, formula is actually V...
equals the velocity squared over two my uh, uh, times the gravitational constant, times the gravitational constant, which is 32.2. So um, in, in many, many applications, so if this value was eight, right? So if you think about velocity in piping systems, a lot of times we shoot for eight, eight, maybe 10 or whatever. And then this is two times 32.2. This value, if eight squared is 64, two times 32 is roughly 64. So that number in many applications is one. That, that's what that value is gonna be um, uh, at one. The, um, you gotta be careful though. You gotta be careful in some piping systems, pumping systems. If that velocity starts getting a lot higher, that value is going to scoot up and that could cause you some problems. That could cause you some problems. So you got to be careful um, as you start doing that, as you start doing that. And then, whoop, 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 whoop. all right, let me get uh, back to my normal drawing mood, mode. So uh, we, in, in, in my example, I'm going to use 10 feet and it just shows you that that value goes from one all the way up to 1.6. And then the vapor pressure actually comes from the steam tables. And uh, once I get through this calculation, uh, I'm going to uh, go to a steam table and show you where I get that from. Uh, so this value, uh, you, you get it from the steam tables. Matter of fact, let me go to that right now. Uh, if I can find it. There's little Madison. Oh, look at that steam table. <laughs> <laughs> Here's a steam table. Let me zoom in a little bit. All right, and you can, I mean, any one of us can go online and get it. Um, so if, I, if I'm estimating at 100, 100 degrees, so this is a cooling tower, right? So, you know, 100 degrees is a good estimate. Um, my value was 0.9492. And if I multiply 0.9492 times uh, um, 2.31, I come up to 2.19 or 2.2. So um, you get you get this uh, that value um, from your steam tables. One thing I want to point out. One thing I want to point out. If you have a hot water system, hot water system, right? That that this absolute pressure uh, gets quite high. So you got to be careful on a hot water system. Maybe if you're at the top of the building, right? If you're at the bottom of the building uh, in a closed loop system. You've got a lot of pr uh, pressure in, in, in this uh, system. You go up to the top, maybe you only have the pressure uh, to get over the top of the uh, piping. So it could be down to 5 PSI, 7 PSI, 10 PSI, or whatever. Your, your value is a lot lower, and this value is a lot higher. So uh, please, please, in a closed loop system, if the, if, if the pump is located at the top or it's a very hot system, you know, a hot water system, Think about the calcs. Do the calcs. Take it into account. Um, if you need some guidance, get in, get in, get in touch with your takeo rep, um, or you can get uh, and they can get get us. Uh, many of them know, know what we're talking, know how to do this. They've done it before, or they can get in touch with Jim or or, or his counterpart, or the, contact the factory, and we, and we can help you with some of these calcs. But it does need to be considered uh, on some types of, of systems. So you can see that as these values uh, change. So uh, just keep that in mind. All right, where's my PowerPoint? Back to this one. I'm still mad at myself, Jim, for that uh, screw up. Oh, well. Oh, don't beat yourself up. Oh, well. Oh, That's well. all right. So, some of the people out there can, can make the gargling noise themselves or, 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 or rocks, uh, in, you know, because they, they've I heard wasn't it before. Quick enough. I could have been doing that in the background. Sorry. Yeah, you, you could have been my drum player. <laughs> oh, well. Oh, well. You know, I, I apologize, Rich. Rich would have been right on that, too. He would have been like, oh. <laughs> so, in this case, in this case, uh, you, you do the math. The NPSH available is 30.1. And I chose a pump at 18 feet, and uh, I'm a conservative person. I don't like uh, uh, issues in the field, so I'm going to show you some recommended uh, values uh, that, uh, that 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 I've uh, 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 where'd it go? 
Um, so there's there's some people out there that recommend, um, uh, you know, maybe five to seven uh, uh, feet above if it's a, a certain size pump. Hold on a second, let me uh, get that information. So uh, if it's an eight inch impeller or less, so di diameter is up to eight inch, I would recommend or general practices is this differential should be five, five to six feet. So that's for smaller pumps. You start getting up to uh, up to 12 inch impellers, um, you, you're, you should go into that conservative nature of seven to 10 feet, uh, uh, where this differential is seven to 10 feet. Above 12 inch impellers, um, uh, there's some people out there that recommend 15 five feet above that, above that. Because, uh, and I'm going to go to the pump curve and show you why we're, to, we're estimating that. Things change in the field or over time, uh, things get dirty or whatever. Um, so you, you need that differential um, to, to be conservative. And a lot of it has to do with the pump curves as you get further out on the curve. Notice how it exponentially goes up. So you, you, you may have been selecting based on uh, 15 feet, but all of a sudden it can be uh, th uh, 25, 30 feet. Uh, just because of the system itself. Um, so that's something to consider there. Those are some general uh, guidelines, uh, some general guidelines a, a, as you go through uh, your calculations and, and start making selections. Uh, your your TACO rep can help you uh, in that regard as well. Uh, so something to consider in, in that regard. But that's part of the reason why um, uh, us uh, we recommend uh, a safety value va uh, value there. Uh, a safety number, and and, and to be quite honest, uh, you know, obviously a pump doesn't always run at its design point, right? Variable speed, it moves up and down, moves around. So there could be times, there could be times it may be cavitating a little bit and not a lot of bit. So uh, that's why the, the the more safety factor you can include in your calculation, the better. And it should should be should be able to uh, be done once you start making pump selections and, and take that into account. Yeah. Uh... Brett, not a question, but uh, maybe something you just you just hit it on the head there. Uh, when you're having a cavitation, what are the conditions? Is it at a high temperature? In this in this case, the cooling tower was, uh, you know, sounded like marbles, and uh, it was it was on startup. Um, it was not a uh, the, the chiller wasn't on. They were just testing. They were just bumping the pump and getting it running. So um, I don't know what the water temperatures were, but but that could play into the factor of, of you know, yes. it's happening water. only so often, right? Yep, water temperature uh, affects it. Uh, uh, you know, the startup at different times. As a matter of fact, um, uh, if you're in a mechanical room and they're starting up a pump and maybe it's uh, vibrating or, or you think it might be cavitating or right on the edge of cavitation, um, uh, what I recommend, a lot of times the system hasn't been balanced so not all the resistance is there in the system yet. So you might be running out on the curve. You might be running way down here on the curve, right? Because the, you, you, the system was designed at 80 feet. And maybe you're only at 60 feet. So you're way out here on the curve. And that cap, that uh, MPSH, th this curve doesn't drastically go up. Uh, bigger pumps probably uh, go up a little farther, a little, little quicker. That, that, could, that could put you uh, above uh, what, what, what the value should be or could be for your calculations. And you might hear that. So uh, I have uh, once or twice gone over to the discharge valve, which is a no-no long-term, and, and added some resistance to it to, br to, bring the, to bring the pump curve back, uh, the pump operation back up to here. So uh, something to consider in that regard. Thank you, Jim, for uh, bringing that up. The other, the other um, uh, item uh, that I want to mention um, as we're getting close here, uh, I'm finishing up, is I, I talked about this absolute or atmospheric pressure at sea level, at sea level. So, Brett, if it's yep. not sea level, I mean, I'm in Chicago, you're in Rhode Island, um, somebody in, uh, in uh, Colorado, that's going to affect them? Yep. Great point, Jim. If you look, here's the chart, right? Absolute pressure in barrel rod readers at different altitudes, right? So at sea level, there's that 14.7, 14.69, right, uh, to, to be exact. But as you start getting up higher, and uh, shame on me, uh, I know Jim's uh, just outside of Chicago, but uh, he's probably still around 1,000 feet. You can see it changes a little bit. But you go over to Denver or mile high, right? Uh, all of a sudden, there's a, a, even a bigger change here. Or you start getting up uh, into the mountains or whatever, 
there's even a bigger change. So that could that could affect your calculation as well. And especially if you're used to um, uh, doing the calcs or you work in Boston, you work uh, uh, you know closer to the sea level, uh, you don't think about this, uh, but this value, uh, so uh, you know that does come into play. So think about it. Um, uh, let me let me do some quick calcs here. If I'm if I'm using uh, if I'm at 7,500 feet, and I uh, multiply this out, 11.12 times 2.31, right? That's 20 uh, 25.7 uh, compared to that 33.9. So that could could make a big difference, right? If if you remember here, we had 33.9. That's eight eight feet. That's a big percentage difference. So you do need to take it into account at the, uh, the elevation of your project, or, or at least consider it. Uh, obviously, these first couple, right up to 2,500 feet, uh, it's not a big change. It is a change, right? Don't get me wrong. There is a, a, a couple of feet difference there, but um, you start getting up to mile high or above, it really, you really do have to consider it. So, uh, you know, there's so much that goes into it. And, and, and to be quite honest, in a closed loop system, Many times you're, you're, you're upwards of uh, 80 to 90 uh, feet and, and you're selecting pumps in the 20s, uh, teens, 20s, 25, whatever, you got plenty of safety margin, right? So even if you uh, did the project in Colorado or, or whatever, uh, you've got, the safety factors are built in. So that's probably why a lot of folks may not um, uh, spend as much time as they uh, possibly could or should uh, on this calculation, but uh, nonetheless, um, uh, it is some things to consider. So, and you know, it gets expensive. It gets expensive if there's an issue in the field. I'm not sure exactly what happened with the case Jim was talking about, but think about it: having to raise the tower. Well, uh, you know that that that's after the fact. We're talking about after the fact. That's one way, right, to create more more space here. Dig out, dig out, and ra uh, lower the pump. Well, any one of these is a cost costly endeavor. Change the pump. Change the pump, and that's that's obviously a costly endeavor as well. Uh, there may be some quick ways to do that, uh, for, uh, or whatever, or or, or but, but non, nonetheless, uh, there's cost associated with that. Uh, and then and then look at this piping, right? Uh, uh, we were talking about we were talking about maybe the piping uh, had some added resistance, or there's a Y strainer in there, or 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 or, or some components. So you, if you can lower the resistance, it may get you down. Uh, where there's not an issue, right? This is uh, uh, this is an estimated value. You, you obviously you would do your calcs, and uh, you know don't put too many components on here and add um, a head loss uh, in between the two. So uh, something to consider in, in that regard. So yeah, Brett, I just want to make a point if you don't mind going back. Um, yeah. Uh, you know, just just to kind of I, br I brought it up. I was involved in a situation. Rich was involved. We we kind of and ultimately. Uh, it's a great point because it, it was the first time I was experiencing it with Taco, uh, being on board with Taco. And the important element is to be able to test across the pump at the at our uh, gauge taps to verify what it was. We were getting we were getting pressures, but ultimately it didn't add up. And uh, you know, had conversations with Rich, and and essentially it was a FaceTime video to show where they were testing from, and we're like. No, it, you, the t two test ports that we have available because that is the most accurate way for us to know. And that's what the disconnect was. They were providing pressure points on the system. And it turns out there was an additional eight pounds of pressure drop that was not accounted for because of some 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 added uh, wasn't wasn't accounted for. So the, the additional pressure drop on the suction side of the pump ultimately turned out to be the problem. But I think it was important to note that the pressure drop across our pump had to be known for us to, to help figure out what the issue was. The, we, we need a lot of information um, uh, in order to um, uh, resolve issues um, uh, from afar or even, even close up. So um, uh, that's a great point, Jim. I, 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 yeah, this, this was in the midst of COVID. So getting out to the job site physically was not something we could do but that that is that is you know we had a rep out there and and uh, use you know using the rep as the eyes and and we would have been there if, if we would have been able to uh, travel at that point in time so i think it's a, a valid point that we most of our commercial pumps have cappings and that is my understanding 
the best place to take pressure so that we can take a look at the pressure across our pump to help facilitate what what solution might be uh, uh, acceptable or, or or what's happening specifically. And um, uh, I, 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 I hate, I, I wanna add to what you're talking about, right? The importance of the data and whatnot. To be quite honest, we don't get calls on five and 10 horsepower pumps either. It's the, 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 the big boys, right? 60, 80, uh, 75, 100 horse, 150 horse. So um, uh, <laughs> uh, it's it's never a small one, right, right Jim? Uh, no, no. Yeah, yeah, it was uh, probably 100 horse. Um, yeah. And of yeah. course, uh, I'll just say it this way. Uh, uh, we're, we're here to help with whatever this, the problem is. Um, and, and it's interesting how often it turns out to be a product specific. It's a system generally issue and we're help we're here to help with whatever the situation is that's how i i guess i look at it my my job is to help help whatever i can do with the system and it might not be our specific problem but we're there to support it period and, and you know um i we i tried to cover um, a lot of the variables in, in this calculation you're looking at here but if you ever, ever have some uh, questions, specific questions on your project, and you, and you want to go over it uh, with, uh, with somebody, um, we're available. Um, uh, myself, Rich, uh, Jim, and others, uh, even your TACO rep. Um, we, and uh, the, the, our TACO reps are, are, are not shy people. Uh, Jim can attest to that. And if they ever can't answer your question, they will come to the factory. And we're, we're more than uh, happy to help. We can't be responsible for it but we can at least uh, point you in a direction uh, to, to, to uh, answer the question. So if you have an unusual situation, a design uh, out of the box, uh, you, you may wanna um, think about it up front instead of after the fact, because uh, it, gets, uh, it gets painful after the fact and uh, um, uh, you know, uh, finger pointing and, and whatnot. And it's usually the pump's fault, right, right, uh, right Jim? It's <laughs> initially, <laughs> unfortunately. <laughs> I'm going to I'm not going to share the details of what Rich shared with me, but uh, it's amazing how many times uh, something is is pointed to and what it's what it actually is. But at the end of the day, we're here to help resolve it because it doesn't help anybody to have a, you know, something that does not get rectified one way, shape or form. And, you know, if it's if it's on us, we're going to be there to help it, oh, yeah. uh, help address it, period. Well, um, I've covered all the topics I wanted to cover. Um, and again, uh, I have egg on my face. I apologize about this, uh, the, the YouTube video. Um, uh, uh, shame on me. Uh, uh, oh, anyways, uh, uh, thanks yeah, everyone. Yeah, right. Any yeah. questions? Uh, any anything out there, Jim? Uh, any well, other there questions? is there is a question, and I don't know if you can go back to that slide where it shows the YouTube clip because the question was, can you post the YouTube video in the chat? I was not able to click and put it into the chat, but maybe you will be able to. Um, that was what a request was. And I just put, I'll see if that can happen. So that was the one question that I could not, because I didn't have access to the PowerPoint and you're going to throw it in the perfect. So, uh, that was a great, uh, Sarah, Sarah, did it man, if I was I think giving I did it. stars. I might've done it. Sarah, did I do it? <laughs> I, you, you posted it to Tom. Um, but as long as uh, no, it says the all posted. entire audience. Oh, perfect, perfect, awesome. Hopefully I did it. Well, Sarah, thank you for asking that question. Um, all right, so it uh, one minute according to my Chicago clock, which uh, is similar to yours, but an hour difference. Um, I think I think you addressed all the questions that we have up there, and we we addressed the one that uh, I was hoping. Hoping we could. So, Sarah, thank you for that question, and Brett, thank you for posting that. With that said, I'm uh, um, always a pleasure to to help out, and always a pleasure to learn something from all these uh, presentations, even even on on uh, Takeo side. So, Brett, I'm going to turn it over to you for closing remarks. Thanks, Jim. Appreciate it. Uh, appreciate everyone's time. Uh, hope you got something out of it. Uh, as simple of a topic that this is, there's a lot to it. And uh, uh, come on back for more information down the road. And as Jim said, uh, we are able to travel. So if you uh, want some uh, some on-site training on any of our topics, 
uh, for, for your team or, or, or whatever, uh, we, we can set it up. Get in touch with your Takeo rep, and uh, we, we can set something up. Uh, I'm anxious to, to travel. And if there's anybody in Florida, um, I'm anxious to head down there. The, the winter's coming. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. We'll see you down the road. Take care.